Hi there, this is Alvin from Dr. Wealth. Recently, there is a new product that's being opened for application and that's the Astra 8 bonds. Given the current environment of high interest rate, bond investing has become more popular because now you can enjoy a much higher yield as compared to say 10 years ago. So it is timely that these Astra 8 bonds are being released and in this video, I'm going to share with you the key points for you to consider whether you want to subscribe to these bonds itself. Okay. So just a bit of the key things that you need to note, there are two classes of bonds. There's a class 1A which is denominated in Sing dollars and there's also a class A2 that's denominated in US dollar. The interest rates are different, right? The Sing dollar one is at 4.35% and the USD version is at 6.35%. One of the key reasons why there is a differing interest rate, even though it's the same bond, is because uh, US dollar has attracted a higher interest rate as compared to a Sing dollar uh, investment, right? So that is the prevailing interest rate differential between Singapore and US. And a minimum subscription for either one is $2,000 in the respective currency, right? So it's $2,000 SING for A1 and there's $2,000 US dollar for A2, okay? And it'll be incremental of $1,000. So you can subscribe for $3,000, $4,000, $5,000, but not in any other multiples, all right? So it has to be in the incremental $1,000 after the first $2,000, right? So that is the key things that I think uh, we get it out of the way. But there are more details that you should know. Okay, that how are these cash flow generated, what are some of the risks, and now we'll go into the deeper parts. This is a screenshot of the simplified priority of payments. This is provided by Azilia Management, issuer of this Astra 8 uh, bonds. And what they did was that they invested in private equity funds. Okay, so these private equity funds are typically not available for retail investors. They are meant for institutions or uh, accredited investors or people with high net worth basically and these PE funds will distribute cash to the investors from time to time so what Azilia did is that they will take this cash flow to pay down the expenses for uh, issuing these bonds right all the taxes all the hedging and also the management fees etc etc and after that they will pay out some of these uh, proceeds to the class A1 and class A2 bond holders Right. That's how you get an interest, which is paid out at uh, in a six months interval, right, or half yearly, and thereafter they will have a portion of the proceeds that will be kept in the reserve. Okay, so this reserve is very important because this reserve is what will be used to redeem the A one and the A two bonds eventually, right, a few years down the road. And lastly, they will pay out the rest of the expenses. And the last party to receive it is uh, Azilia itself because they. It is the main equity holder. They own 100% of the investment that is made in these PE funds. Okay, So this is how the payments flow, right? And which means your interest or your ability to get back your capital is highly dependent on how these private equity funds perform, whether they can generate enough cash to pay out the bond investors. Okay, But it is also important to note that these uh, PE funds, is not they are not the ones that uh, launch these bonds okay it is a zillion management that has launched these bonds they securitize the cash flow from these PE funds into the bonds right and enable you to invest in it because it's almost impossible for retail investors to get direct exposure to PE funds without this uh, structuring okay so this is the important step that's being done by Azilia to make PE uh, investment at least indirectly available for the retail investors Right? So that's the structure that they did. So the bonds are not guaranteed by any entity, not even the Masek, even though Azilia is an uh, uh, indirect subsidiary of the Masek, right? the, the Masek reputation is there. Okay? Uh, it's being mentioned quite a lot of times during the prospectus and such, but you must know that these bonds are not guaranteed. Uh, there's only this thing called the limited recourse obligation. So in case of a default, you can make a claim on the interest as well as the principal that you have put into uh, these bonds. But then I, think, I do think that somehow, even though the market is not guaranteed, the reputation is still on the line. <laughs> okay. So, so far, if you look at the previous Astra bond issue, they've all been uh, redeemed. Okay, on time, on schedule, which later I also have a slide for you to look at. Okay, and there are also additional safeguards, right? We talk about the reserve account, which is where the proceeds, extra proceeds that after paying out the interest to you, they will keep the proceeds as reserve, not touchable, right? They cannot invest this reserve. And this reserve will pile up or increase over time until the redemption date, they will use this cash to buy back the bonds. Okay, so saying that is the first safeguard. The second safeguard is that they cannot borrow too much. 
Okay, right. So there is a maximum loan to value of 40%. If, if they trigger this past 40%, there are certain condition, they need to bring it down again using the reserve to pay down the debt. And the third one is credit facility. So let's say there's really a cash flow issue, you can tap on this credit facility, which has already been established with the banks, right? So the banks have already agreed to lend. It's just whether uh, Azilia needs to tap on this resource, maybe due to the timing of cash flow, right? Maybe they need to pay for some expenses before the PE funds uh, distribute the cash. So for this kind of arrangement, they could borrow and tap on it without affecting the interest paid to you. There are these three safeguards to ensure that the risk is minimized. Okay, And the, there are mandatory call dates. Okay? What this means is that even though these bonds are a tenure of 15 years, okay, the call date, mandatory call date is such that the Azealia management need to redeem this bond for A1, five years from the issue. Then for A2, it's six years from the issue. Okay, so that is this mandatory means that they must. It is not optional. Although there are two conditions that need to be met, okay, at least for the A1, uh, is that the reserve balance must be higher than the principal amount. Right, so the cash reserve must build up above the total redemption amount for A1, which is $260 million. Sing. And the same condition is that there's no credit facility unpaid. That means if there are certain borrowings from the, uh, this credit facility, they need to repay first, right? And then the amount still must be bigger than the redemption. If that have fulfilled, the A1 bonds will be redeemed and on 19 July 2029. Okay? And for A2 it will be 19 July 2030. So it's a five to six years uh, tenure. Uh, um, for the mandatory call date and if if let's say Azealia is not able to redeem the bonds the interest rate will go up by 1% or the coupon rate will go up by 1% so the class A1 will become 5.35% and class A2 will become 7.35% right so it become more attractive okay, it's, it's almost like a punishment now. <laughs> but it also can see it as an incentivized uh, the Azealia management to buy back the bond, otherwise you need to pay more financing charges, right? Pay more interest to you. So I think this is fair, right? In terms of the structuring, and these are the uh, previous Astra bonds. So Astra three was the first PE bond that is listed on SGX in twenty one six, but only until Astra four in twenty one eight that was the first PE bond that was made available to retail investors. Okay, then thereafter. Uh, retail investor get to participate in Astro 5, Astro 6, Astro 7, and now Astro 8. And looking at their track record, you can see that um, they have redeemed um, the past or the earlier Astro 3, Astro 4, Astro 5, as well. The class A bonds have been fully redeemed. So they have this track record that they have been on schedule redeem the bonds. So I don't see any different for uh, Astro 8 in this case. And uh, over the years, it's not like we have not met any crisis, right? In 2020, there was COVID. Uh, in 2022, the market crashed. So, so far, you can see that all these uh, uh, private equity bonds have been redeemed by Azealia. So I do think that the track record uh, is credible in this case. So Astra 8 should have the ability to be redeemed five years and six years later. But now let's answer it from a personal finance perspective, right? So should you have such PE bonds in your portfolio? Okay, so this is a screenshot that I prepared, right? So on the left side is the ultra high net worth asset allocation. That is based on Tiger 21, a uh, high net worth club in the US, actually it's all around the world, and how they allocate, how the wealthy allocate the money essentially. And I also bring up the Singapore household asset allocation for a comparison. So there are a few key differences when we compare the ultra high net worth asset as well as the Singapore household assets. Um, for Singapore household asset, it's not surprising. For 3.9% of the total assets are in residential properties. Whereas for the ultra high net worth, it is still a large percentage for residential, uh, for real estate essentially, it's, but it's smaller at 24%. So for the ultra high net worth, they have a lower allocation to real estate. And if we look at the public equities, it's at 22%. And when we look at the Singapore household asset allocation, it's just 8.4%. Ultra high net worth invests in a lot more stocks compared to an average Singaporean. In terms of cash, right? Singaporeans leave a lot of cash, 20, almost 20% in currency and deposit, while the ultra high net worth have about just 11%. And another key difference is the largest ultra high net worth allocation is in private equity, 31%. And in the Singapore household, you can see that there's zero. Okay, because it is normal since majority of the people are not uh, accredited investors, they can't even invest in private equity. 
But why I wanted to show you this is because um, there's this saying, right? The rich get richer, right? You should allocate closer to what they look like rather than every Singapore household allocation. So if you see there's a big private equity chunk out of it, right? I would think that getting a bit of exposure need not be like the biggest exposure for your portfolio, right? But having some allocation to private equity uh, does make sense. The Astra 8 bonds or even the whole Astra series is indeed special because essentially that's the only way for retail investors to get exposure to private equity. Of course, another way is to invest in private equity firms, right? The firms that actually manages private equity funds. But other than that, there is no way to invest directly into PE funds if you are not accredited. And this is the returns, okay, I blow it up again, right, you can see the private equity index has delivered higher returns compared to public equities, whether it's the S&P 500 or MSCI World, um, uh, on an average basis, of course, right, some PE funds will do better, some PE funds will do worse, but on an average, they have beat the public equities, and that is why uh, so-called the rich get richer, because their biggest allocation is in private equity. And let's look at something that I picked up as well. To be very clear, Azealia doesn't need to tap on the retail market. Why? Because before they launched this for the public tranche, they have already run the books with the INSTI as well as the accredited investor. And they have reserved some for them, 260 million class A1 and 150 million US dollars class A2. Right? And at that tranche, they have already been 2.6 times over subscription. So which means the demand is actually quite high and they can easily mop up the retail tranche. Okay, if Azealia didn't specially reserve this for the retail investors, right, they would have been gobbled up by the institutions as well as the accredited investor. And they, Azealia will have an easier time because they don't need to deal with a lot of investors. They don't need to educate retail investors. So the key thing is why are they doing this? Because Azealia is set up with a mission to bring private equity access to a broader group of investors, right? namely the retail investors. So therefore, they do this for the retail. And hence, retail investors now have their own tranche. right? Otherwise, the only gone institution will mop you up. Okay, so you can see that this is more of an opportunity right? that's given to retail investors rather than uh, they really need the money from retail. And they also say that uh, depending on demand, this extra aid uh, have uh, different tiers in the sense that if you apply less than 50,000, right, you will sure have allocation. Okay? It's just that maybe you will not get a full amount, you get a partial amount, but you will get allocation. The priority is for smaller investors. If you invest more than 50,000, right, you will need to ballot, okay? which means you may not have anything or you may have part or in full, like, of course, depending on the demand. Right? So you can see even how they structure the, the uh, allocation of the bonds, they tend to focus on the masses, they tend to focus on investors with smaller denomination. This is how they really incentivize or encourage uh, more retail investors to come in, right? They want the numbers and it's not trying to get the rich to get richer, right? They are trying to get the masses to get richer by providing this access. And I also wanted to check whether this uh, bond use or this coupon rate is uh, comparable. Right. Um, so let's look at the class 1A which is in SING dollars and it's at 4.35% and I went to do a screen on uh, Bond Supermat and this is what I get. Uh, there are three bonds that matures in around 22.9. Uh, they are also investment grade okay? but note that the uh, PE bonds have a higher uh, rating. I think I expected to be an A but here we are looking at the Bs. Okay. And even for the Bs, um, this Escort Read, Medium Term Note, FLCT Treasury, Maple Tree Industrial Trust Treasury, they are looking at around 36 to 3.7%. Okay. So for 4.35%, it's higher than uh, almost equivalent, although it's not Apple to Apple, right? because these are single uh, public listed companies, they are not PE funds. Okay. Um, but nevertheless, what we are looking at is uh, benchmarking the rates. Right, so 4.235 looks uh, reasonable. And the other one will be the A2, which is the USD version. Right, USD version, you can see across the board, the US dollar uh, bonds that's maturing in 2030, they are looking at about 5 to 6%. Okay, 5 to 6%. Majority are below 6%. And this uh, A2 is paying, paying a 6.35%. So actually, it's higher than the market rate that we're looking at. So nevertheless, the bond use or the coupon rates are reasonable. Right? They are above the uh, average that you can get in the market right now. Right? So I do think that overall, 
these uh, Astral bonds do provide the opportunity for retail investors to get access and at very reasonable interest rates. So how to apply? You can do it on ATM, you can do it on your internet banking, so it's very convenient. So at the time of recording, the application is already open, so you can apply for it and it will close on 17 July 2024, 12 noon. Okay, so remember the date. Just want to be clear, this is not a sponsored video, right? though this is just my personal point of view and uh, hopefully I've helped you to make a better decision. right? So thank you for watching, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.